All right, good evening, ASD parents. My name is Carol Boatman. I am the Director of Learning Innovation Innovations, and we're excited to have you here. I'm super excited to have Jennifer and Misty to go over Calvert Learning and give you an overview of the parent platform. I uh, will be doing a combination of um, live uh, live training where Jennifer is going to walk you through what it looks like, and then Misty and I are going to answer some questions, either live or uh, typed. And then at the end, you'll have an opportunity to go through some questions also. Whatever questions are not answered in this, we will provide answers and put them up on the virtual website. If you're not able to attend, or maybe you have a family or a family friend that you know is not able to attend, this will be posted on our ASD YouTube so that you can go back and access it again if you want to, or you can share it with other families. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer. Thanks so much, and it's a pleasure to be here with you today to share a little bit of information about our K-5 through content. So in our session today, we will cover a few big topics that I'm sure you have some questions about. We're going to start by taking a, a brief look at the curriculum. We're going to talk some about the course structure, as well as look at some examples of content that's actually found in our courses. Then we're going to dive in a little bit more deeply and take a look at your role as the learning guide. That person that's there to support students from home, um, whether you're a parent or a guardian, grandparent, aunt, uncle, <laughs> whoever's going to be at home with your student, you actually play a really key role in the virtual environment. So we're going to talk talk about your job and what that role might look like for you. And then we're going to take a look at the platform. We're going to walk you through the process of how to get logged in. And then we're going to do some general navigation so that you can start to familiarize yourself with what the day-to-day -day experience will be like within the virtual program through ASD. So to just get us kicked off and started, I do want to give you some high level understanding of the framework that we use to build all of our courses for students in grades K through five in math, science, English language arts, and social studies. All of the courses follow what we call this PLUS framework. The P and PLUS stands for projects. Um, students are going to be working on projects throughout the course of each and every subject area. Um, don't panic when you hear that students are going to be working pot working on projects, parents. Um, these are not the, the traditional projects that you think about where you know you have to eat 75 popsicles so that you have all the popsicle sticks and then build the build the cabin and then build the diorama um, but what these projects are um, is that they're opportunities for your students to be actively engaged in the content we know that for students in grades K through five, that providing them with active learning opportunities are really going to be key to their success and in their level of engagement within the content. And so these projects are designed to build that engagement for them. They're designed to really provide them with, with some real world applicability, something that they can connect their learning to in the world around them so that it makes it more meaningful. And in order to do those projects, there's there's a lot of learning that needs to take place within the curriculum. And so you'll find within each and every course, lots of active learning opportunities for your students. It's not just about clicking through pages in a textbook or watching a video or playing a game. We're actually going to use all different types of modalities to reach your students' individual needs. You'll find some textbooks, some digital textbooks within the content, as well as some great third-party resources like Brain Pop and Discovery education streaming, but you'll also find examples of virtual labs and science. We'll use digital manipulatives to help make math come alive for your students within our math courses. And we'll also then give your students some opportunities to get some hands-on practice with what they're learning within the content. These are all ways to really get students' minds activated in the learning process. The U in PLUS stands for U's, and these are actually assessments that are built into the courses. We call them U's for mastery assessments, and what they are meant to do is they're meant to help your ASD teacher really kind of dig in and see if your student has mastered their 
the, the different skills and concepts that are taught within the curriculum. So the use for mastery assessments are going to be a little bit more open-ended for your students, but we're going to ask your students to focus in on transferring their new understanding to new situations and scenarios within the assessment. Um, there really are a great measure of whether or not your students understand the content within the learn components of our framework. And finally, the S and plus stands for show. And you'll notice that the S and the P, they're the same color. And that's because these two lesson parts go hand in hand with one another. The show lessons are chances for students to work on their projects iteratively throughout the course of a unit. And it gives your students a chance to show their progress to their teachers so that they um, know that they're on the right track with those projects. And then at the end of a unit, students have the opportunity to do a final show with, where they get to submit that final project to their teacher for grading. And it's a really great way for your students to have that sense of pride and ownership in a job well done as they complete and work through those projects. Speaking of projects, there are a few couple of slides. Uh, there are a few screenshots here of some projects that we have built into the courses. I do, though, want to underscore the fact that these projects are not the main component of the curriculum. I do like to point out some of the different projects just to get you excited about what your students are going to be learning. But throughout the course of the content, students will probably only do two or three projects in every subject area um, throughout the course of the year. You'll see how, here on your screen of just a couple of examples of some of the projects we have built into our courses. This is a science project that students create during um, grade three science where they're actually learning about physics. And we are asking students to build a Rube Goldberg machine alarm clock. However, um, we want to make sure that this quote unquote build is something that students do with items they already have around their home. So this does not mean that you need to go out and buy a bowling ball and a bunch of and a bunch of pieces of wood and, and dominoes to create this elaborate Rube Goldberg machine alarm clock. We actually really want students to focus on found materials, recycled materials in order to um, build this project so that they can show off what they've learned about the different forces. They need to show different, at least three different pushes and pulls, changes in speed and direction within that project. And it's a really great way to make physics come alive for your students. And down here, you will see um, just a little screenshot of another project that students do. This is from fourth grade math. And you'll see that students get to get in the kitchen and do some cooking. I can't think of a more real world applicable way to practice math than than doing a recipe um, with your students. So this is a chance for them to double a recipe to practice those skills of adding fractions. And um, they really are great ways to get your students excited about what you're learning, about what they're learning. You might take a look at these projects, though, and go, you know what, this is probably going to be a little bit over my student's head, or I'm not really sure that we can do this particular um, this particular project because these might be, um, it might, might have items that my student is allergic to within the recipe. If you ever see a project that you think will be problematic for your student, or um, you think you might need to, to make some modifications, please, please feel free to First of all, check the teaching notes within the project to see if there are already some suggestions on how you might modify the project for your student. But also feel free to reach out to your ASC teacher. They're going to really work with you at any time. You feel like something in the content might need to have a little modification. Um, and so we're going to just walk through that framework there. So we've looked at the P for projects. Um, this is an example of a learn activity, that L and that plus framework. A few things that I want to point out about the different learn activities within the content is that every single day when your students log in, there will always be some sort of submission, something that they're going to turn in to let them um, to really show them that they've completed the lesson part for the day. Some of these submissions might look like a rate your understanding or a practice question. These are designed to get your students thinking about the learning process, really get them to think about how they feel about the content as well as how they feel um, their understanding is in terms of, of what they've just learned. The practice questions are just that, 
they're, they're found in math and their chances for your students to get some extra practice on what they've been learning. You'll also find quick checks built into the courses. These are completely auto scored. And so your students are actually going to get immediate feedback from these submissions. They're going to find out right away what they got right on a quick check, what they got wrong on a quick check, as well as be pushed to more to explore activities that either will deepen student understanding if a student gets a quick check correct, a question correct, or we might even provide them some opportunities for redirect and allow students to revisit the content if they get the quick check wrong. Again, these are opportunities for students to monitor their own learning, as well as to pro provide them with some individualization within the platform. This is a quick little example of the U in our PLUS framework, a Use for Mastery Assessment. You'll notice here that there are a few components that I want to point out to you in terms of submission for these Use for Mastery Assessments. In English language arts in particular, these Use for Mastery Assessments are almost always going to be open-ended, meaning your students need to come up with um, ways to communicate their response to their teachers. And you'll find with every single use for mastery that your students have the option of either typing in their, res in their response or uploading a file. Students might find it easier to upload a file, especially if you have a younger student or students that are working at the beginning of the year and they're just getting used to a digital platform. Um, what they can do is handwrite their response, grab your smartphone, take a quick little picture of it and upload that file, and then your teacher can grade your student's handwritten work. You might also find some additional ideas in terms of how you can submit um, those, those, um, those assignments as well. Um, you might have instances where your student may want to record themselves answering the question, or maybe even um, maybe even record some audio feedback through an additional resource and put that link right there in the text box. There are lots of different ways that your teachers might suggest students submit these individual use for mastery assessments. But regardless of the submission, regardless of how your teacher might modify the individual assignments, these particular assessments are really designed to get to the heart of the matter and whether or not your student understands the content. And finally, kind of focusing in again on that plus framework, we're at the S for show. And this is a chance, this is just a quick little screenshot of what a show lesson will look like for your students. Um, these again are chances for students to show their progress in the project. And so this is a chance for students to check in with their teacher um, so that their teacher can make sure that they're on the right track in terms of what they've been working on. And so you'll see here that these project progress questions, the show lesson opportunities where students are working on those projects, iteratively throughout the course of the unit. Those aren't going to be scored. They really are just designed to be a check-in to build in the time in the unit for students to work on that project. And then this is what a final show might look like in terms of submitting that final project. Typically, we are going to encourage to get encourage students to get a little creative in the way that they present their information. You'll see here on this particular um, submission that students were actually working on a project where they needed to design something that would keep an egg safe in a collision. And so they were researching different materials, putting together their plan. No build was necessary. It really was just a plan, like a blueprint. But we did give your students some ideas about ways that they might want to present this material. Maybe they want to create a presentation through Prezi that's a little bit more interactive. Or perhaps they want to use an, a resource like VoiceThread to um, give them the chance to speak about their particular project submission here. We really want to give students that freedom and flexibility to really explore the content in a new way and do these projects in, in ways that, that really make sense for them. In terms of the general course structure, um, every course, again, is going to follow that PLUS framework. But within each course itself, you will find units in every subject area. And then these units are broken down into lessons and lesson parts. 
within every single unit, there will always be a unit quiz at the end of that unit. These are summative in nature. And so this is going, these quizzes are going to cover everything that the student learned within that particular unit. You'll also see that there will be projects um, built into the courses. Um, they do happen again approximately um, two to three times per subject area. You'll also see within those courses lessons. And so these lessons are broken down into lesson parts. At the end of every full lesson, students will always take a use for mastery assessment. And then those lesson parts. So within the individual lesson parts themselves, again, there's always going to be some sort of submission, either a quick check, a rate your understanding, or a practice question. And these are designed to show that those individual lesson parts are complete. And here's just a quick glance at a course outline view of one of our courses. And so you can see right here, and we're going to look at this in more detail when we jump into the platform in just a second, but you'll see a really high level overview of everything that's included in the course. For this grade one English language arts course, there are five units. Two of those five units have projects that students will work on. And, um, and the entire course itself is made up of 185 instructional days. And then this is a quick look at how long or how many days are involved in each and every unit within the course. Now I want to talk a little bit about the role of uh, of the family in a virtual learning environment, because this obviously is very different from maybe what you've experienced in the past for school, for your student. And so um, it's important to point out a few key pieces of information in terms of what your role is in your student's life in a virtual environment. Um, the role of the family is very important for these students that are working remotely because they're not going to have their teacher there for them every second of the day providing direct instruction like they would in a traditional classroom. So you're going to have really great thorough lessons that give you step by step instructions on how to support your student through the content. But ultimately, it will be your responsibility as the parent or guardian of the student to make sure that they know how to get logged in each and every day, to be there to answer questions as they're working through the content. And if you have a younger student in grades K, 1, and 2, you're actually going to be providing some direct instruction for your students. So as your student in kindergarten learns about the short A sound, you're going to need to be there with that kindergarten student to help them sort that out and figure out what does the short A sound like? Um, how can I identify it in words? How can I use that sound to blend, to, to, to read a word? While we're going to walk you through that entire process, they are going to need you as the learning guide or the parent support person there to help support them as they go through that content. But as I mentioned, you are fully supported in that role as a learn learning guide um, within the content embedded right at point of the at point of use are very thorough, detailed teaching notes. And what these teaching notes are going to provide you as that support person from home are general information such as answers to daily work, tips and suggestions on how to support students that might be struggling, also ideas and ways to challenge and extend students that might need um, that extra push to kind of move them forward a little bit for farther and faster. Um, you'll also see instructional support videos as well. Um, these are designed specifically for math to help support you as you're working with students, um, thinking about um, especially learning how to solve word problems. These instructional support videos are for you to help prep you for the lesson content before your students even get to them. Um, all of these teaching notes are embedded in the content in the curriculum right at point of use and they're going to be a really great resource for you. In addition to those teaching notes, you also will find in the platform, I'm going to point it out to you in just a moment, are student and parent success zones. And what you find in these success zones are really great how-to videos as well as some user guides that are really designed to help support you and your student as you are going through the courses.
We'll also continue to come alongside of you um, as a curriculum provider to help provide you with additional support through parent webinars. And we also have a very thorough technical support team that's always available to help you if you're ever in the platform and you see a link that may have moved or perhaps um, there's um, something within the content that doesn't look quite right. Maybe um, maybe it's um, a lesson that might not be formatted properly or something like that. That. Obviously, we try to find all of that um, before, before the content goes live, but there's a lot of lesson parts within our curriculum. So if you ever find anything like that, please feel free to reach out to us, um, to our technical support team. They'll get those issues resolved right away. You can always reach out to them at support at edmentum.com. Or you can also give them a call um, and let them know that there, there are some some components of the content that might need a little extra attention. Um, and so in terms of what your experience is going to be like when it's time to get logged in, the first thing that you will find is that you will receive login credentials. You may receive these login cr credentials directly from your your district. Um, if you do not, you might see an email that provides you with your username and password. Um, but this content is going to be delivered to you directly um, so that you know exactly how to get logged into the platform. The login screen looks like this. Um, the URL is login.maestrosis.com. And so I do think it's a, a really great idea to bookmark this page. And here is the page live. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. And we're going to go ahead and jump in as a student. We're going to start by looking at a student account. I'm going to give you a really quick walkthrough here um, so that you also have time to ask some questions and we can get some questions answered. But you will receive, again, a username and password that's assigned to your student. You plug those into the login screen, click log in. And when you first get logged in as a student, there are a few things that you'll notice right off the bat. First of all, um, this initial dashboard page is going to give you a really nice section of information that is provided by your teachers. So your teachers can put in announcements right here. And you'll see teachers use this announcements area for lots of different reasons. They might, um, at the beginning of the school year, perhaps provide a little welcome message for you to kind of help get you acclimated to the platform. Um, as the year progresses, you might see your teachers provide um, some tips tips on how to kind of keep track of your daily schedule. They might even get, get as detailed as um, to providing you with a list of the lessons that you should complete each day, as well as some video tutorial resources, things like that. So keep an eye on this announcements page, this, this announcement section, each and every day when you log in as a student or as a parent. Some other things that you'll want to notice and take note of when you first log in, um, there's also an internal messaging system with, built into the platform. And so this is one way that your teachers might communicate with you throughout the course of your school year. They will let you know, your teachers will let you know their preferred method of communication. And if they choose to communicate with you through the internal platform, um, this internal messaging system works just like email. Some other things that you'll notice here that I like to point out is that you have the ability to personalize this for your student. If you click on my settings down here and click on my account, your student can change their profile image. This is really great for them just to kind of personalize their experience, but it's also really great for your teachers too, to be able to um, always put a face with a name when they're working in the platform and grading student work. Some other pieces of information that I think are really helpful on this initial login page that you'll see are some external links to those, whoops, wrong link, sorry. Um, to that student and parent success zone. And so this is what I mentioned um, briefly earlier, but I do want to point out some of the videos that I think are really helpful. First of all, this little video here, A Day in the Life of a K-5 Student, 
great to watch um, as you're prepping for this life in the virtual education world. Also, this little video about how to use the suggested daily schedule page, which we're going to look at together in just a second, really useful in terms of, of getting you set up for success. And finally, I would say this, this resource in particular, once it's time to submit your first use for mastery assessment, it's a great idea to jump back to the success zone and watch this little video that walks you through the process of submitting student work. All of these resources are right um, available to you on the success, success zone right at your fingertips. Some additional resources that you'll see as you scroll on down through the page here. Um, the, this is a great list of some um, computer skills resources. So many of our students, while they are very tech savvy, they are typically more tech savvy when it comes to a phone or perhaps a tablet. And they might not have that much experience maybe with a laptop or a desktop computer. And so these are resources that will help support some of those general computer skills. You'll also see um, a user guide for the platform that's really helpful, as well as some parent expectations and FAQs down here at the bottom. In addition to the student facing success zone page, there is also a parent facing success zone page. And I would say the most useful resource here on this page is really this quick little video that goes into detail about your role as the learning guide in the, um, in the virtual platform. So beyond those, um, those uh, general success zone tips here. When your students get logged in each and every day, after checking those announcements and checking their individual messages, um, really what they're going to use this main platform here is, um, is to use it to log in and then use it to gain access to their actual content. So you can kind of think about this as your login page, your initial launching point, and then when it's time to get started on your lessons, if you scroll down, you'll see every single subject area listed here. This is one of the ways that you can reach out to your teachers. And in order to get into a course, you just click on this big um, rectangular button that says launch course. It actually doesn't matter which subject area you launch the course from because all of the content is housed in one platform, in one place. So once you launch your course, you're actually launched into the lesson delivery platform. And this is where your students and you as the parent or learning guide will be spending most of the time um, in your virtual program. Within this platform, you're going to get great information such as um, the, the daily access to the daily lessons. You will also get information that will cover um, the how well your student is doing in each of their courses. You'll see up to date real time information on student performance and progress all within this platform. Looks like mine's having a little bit of trouble getting logged in there. So I'm going to pivot here and open up. Um, a different account just to give you a quick look at what it will look like for your student. Sorry about that. Let me get logged in and give you a quick little tour here. I especially want to show you some ideas about um, what that daily schedule is going to look like for your students. I think that that's probably one of the pieces that most families have questions about you know, what, what will our daily schedule look like? What can I expect? How do I know what to, or how does my student know what to do each day when he or she logs in? We actually make that process really simple for your student. Um, so this is what a student login will look like. Every day when your student logs in, they will have five days worth of lesson content displayed on the screen. And these are links that will take students directly into the lessons themselves. This blue progress bar will mark that your student's current day's lesson. So this student right here is currently still on day one. Once the student has completed all of the lessons for day one, then their pro the progress bar will move on to day two. One quick note here, um, you'll notice that there are lots of courses loaded in for this demo student. That will not be your student experience. <laughs> you'll actually only have six courses listed here for your students to work through each and every day. 
In terms of what it looks like when a student launches one of these lessons, um, I'll go ahead, I think I'm going to pick um, an English language arts lesson here. We'll go with grade four English language arts. When your students launch a lesson, they will see um, quite a bit of text, actually. This is the kind of information that would have been delivered directly by your, your student's teacher within the classroom. But some things that I want to point out about this text. First of all, this is always going to be directed to your student. So it's written to the student as it is delivered, um, as if it were delivered directly from a teacher. And so what your students can do is, if, especially if they're a new reader or a struggling reader, or if they just get fatigued from reading text, they can actually jump right in, press play, and all of this content can be read aloud to them. So it's as if the, in, the instruction is being directed to them right within the lesson content. You'll also see anytime that we're using a third party resource that it's going to be linked directly into the platform itself. So in this case, this is going to take students to a, a digital version of this text. And we're asking students to read chapter one in this particular book. You'll also see use of um, resources such as graphic organizers. Your students can type directly on these, but the Anchorage School District is also providing you with print resources of all of these materials to help support you as you're supporting your student through the content. And so your students will continue to work through each and every little lesson card here. When they get to the end of the lesson, students will have that submission. In this case, we're asking them to submit a write your understanding question to have them think critically about what they learned within that particular lesson part. We'll go ahead and take a look at another course here just to give you a better idea of what the content looks like. Um, English language arts, that is going to typically be your heaviest quote unquote, um, subject area that students do each day. Um, typically in a brick and mortar classroom, your students would be spending approximately um, one and a half to two hours in English language arts because it does comprise writing and reading and um, for those younger students, phonics skills, vocabulary development skills, um, grammar, all of that is covered in English language arts. So your students in ELA, they will probably spend approximately one and a half to two hours each day in that individual subject area. You will also, um, in terms of math, for example, your students will spend approximately 45 minutes to an hour each day in that course. And for students in science and social studies, you'll also spend um, probably about 30 minutes each day in those two subject areas. But some things to point out about these time frames. First of all, it's not hard and fast. So that means that there are some days where your students might finish um, really quickly. There are other days where um, a lesson might take a little bit longer than you expect. I do think that in terms of some ideas to help set you up for success, that making sure that you have an end point for your day each and every day is going to be a really great way to make sure your students have the opportunity to unplug and recharge and get ready for the next day. So even if you set, let's say, 3 p.m. as your end time each and every day, if, you, if 3 p.m. comes and you haven't quite gotten to every lesson or every part of each lesson that was assigned for that day, it's okay to go ahead and stop and pick up your lessons tomorrow when you log in because you don't want to overwhelm or overburden your student, especially when they're first getting started. So giving them the freedom and the space and the ability to, to, to really adjust their schedule to, to, to meet their needs is a great way to set them up for success at the beginning of the year. What I've done here is I've opened just a, a math lesson to give you an idea of just what other subject areas might look like for your students. Um, this is an interactive activity where students are practicing with some digital manipulatives. Um, it's a really great way to help build a strong number sense for your students. So um, you'll see interactive activities such as this um, built into the courses, really just ways to help support students as they're working through the content I do want to show you a science lesson as well so that you can get um, really kind of that full full force idea of what the content will look like for um, for each and every grade level, each and every subject area. So here is one of those science lessons. 
um, when you click on these external resources, you're going to see um, kind of what the content will look like through st for your students. Lots of great video resources. All of this content can also be read aloud to students. So you just click up here and all of the contents read to them, not just in the lessons, but also in every single digital text. So we want to make sure that students are well support supported um, in every single subject area within the content. The last thing that I do want to point out to you before I jump over into the parent login and show you some of those teaching notes is that your student, as well as you as the parent, have real time information into how well your student is doing in every course. The performance tab is going to list the subject areas that your student is, is working in, that your student's taking, and you're going to get um, real time information about how well your student is doing in the course. So here um, I can see the different submissions that my student has turned in, the scores on those submissions. Um, here I can see my student might need some additional support in this particular subject area. So I see this and I might want to jump in and see if, um, see what's going on, find out why um, their scores are low. I can actually click right on this assessment and take a look at my student responses, the responses that my student submitted. I can see um, the feedback from the teacher right here within this graded assignment. So I can know exactly why my student has a 31%, for example, in this social studies course. I also have real-time information about how far along my student is in every single subject area. So if I take a look at this progress tab, I'm actually gonna see um, little percentage bars that lets me know um, if my student is on track. So if my student's progress bar is green, that means that my student's actually a little bit ahead of the game. They're, they're a little bit ahead of pacing. If my student's progress bar is gray, that means they're on track. And if my student starts to fall a little bit behind, the progress bar will turn red as an indication that maybe we need to do two lesson parts in a day in that particular subject area to help get my student caught up. You also have real-time information into student attendance. So each and every day when your student logs into the platform and they do work within the platform, um, that day will show up with an underline. If you click on that day, you can see all of the lessons that your student completed. In a very traditional sense, students will typically complete one lesson part in each of those four core subject areas every day of math, science, English, language, arts, and social studies. And the last thing I want to point out to you really quickly in the student login before we jump into the parent role and then give you time to um, ask some questions is that um, every time your student has work that is graded by your, their teacher or um, if they were granted a retake, let's say, on a particular assignment, they will always get a notification. And so I'm going to show you really quickly just again how I got to that page. This is your little notification icon up here. I have five new notifications. And so I'm going to see right here that I had a quiz that was graded for me. I can click on this link. It takes me directly to that quiz and I can see um, what I scored as well as the feedback from my teacher. Um, this down here is what it looks like when a student has, was granted a retake by the teacher. So in this case, my teacher wants me to retake Let's Meet Toad and Frog. And I can actually click right here and see a message from my teacher so that I know what I need to focus in on in terms of this retake. And then when I click on this assessment it's or click on this link, it's going to take me right to that assessment so that I can retake it and have an extra shot at that particular submission. So I'm going to go ahead really quickly and jump over to the parent login here so that I can point out that really wonderful resource that's available to you as a parent, and that would be the teaching notes. These teaching notes, again, are going to be sort of like your lifeline in terms of, of ways that you provide your students with support as they're working through their daily lessons. Um, they're going to give you really great resources in terms of what do I do if my student is struggling on a particular concept or what do I do if, if I'm not really sure about how to teach or support my student through this particular lesson. 
within these teaching notes, you're going to get really great examples of ways that you can support your students. So I'm going to show you this grade one English language arts course really quickly. Again, there's that course outline view that I showed you in our little slide deck. Here's our courses, the way they're broken down into units, lessons broken down into lesson parts. And so if I open up this individual lesson part here, I'm going to see these teaching notes embedded right at point of use. And so what these are designed to do is they're going to give me some ideas about how to reach my student. In this case, the very first thing that my student needs to do is read this poem called Batty. And in the teaching note, we're going to give you as the learning guide some ideas about how you might want to approach this. Perhaps you have a very independent reader in, a, in your first grader, and so they're able to maybe read the poem independently on their own. But for other students, they might need you as the parent to read aloud to them, or perhaps they might need to listen to the text read aloud to them through the text read aloud feature. Um, these are all very um, valid ways for your students to read this poem. You'll also find ideas about um, just some little teaching tips. So in this case, students are going to start a grammar lesson where they're actually going to be focusing in on adjectives. We don't call them adjectives yet. In grade one, we're going to call them describing words. But you'll notice here in the teaching note, we're giving you an idea about ways that you can chunk out this information into more digestible bite-sized pieces for your student. Um, these are things that your teacher's traditional, uh, or your student's traditional teacher would have done in their classroom. We're just giving you some of these ideas and tips for you to use from home. You'll also find ideas like this about what to do if your student is struggling to make an observation. It's very tempting for us as parents to want to just help our students and just give them the answer. It's really hard not to do that. But we really want to encourage you as that learning guide support role to um, think about ways that you can ask prompting questions rather than spoon feed the answer to your student. Give them opportunities and support to help them arrive at their answers on their own, given the information that they've already learned. So you'll find great resources like that built right into the content, right at point of use. Here's an example of providing your student with a fill in the blank question type rather than an open ended question. If your student needs that kind of additional support, um, in addition to the support resources you're going to find in um, other subject areas, especially in math, ways to challenge and extend learning for students if they, they really need that um, extra push in, in, the, in the right direction there to challenge them and make them go even further and extend their understanding. Those teaching notes are there for you as the parent to make sure that you have everything that you need to support your student in this virtual environment. The big key takeaway that I want you to have from this time today is, first of all, um, that we have a platform that's built for you that makes it very easy for you to know what to do each and every day when you launch the course. Once you launch that course, you know exactly where your student needs to pick up in terms of um, the daily lessons that they should work on. I also want you to take away the fact that you are never in the dark about how well your students are doing in their courses. You always have real time up to date information about your students performance and progress in every single subject area. And so you have that great insight. And so you know, as the parent, where your student might be struggling, or where they're really excelling. And having this information available to you as you're working with your student from home is invaluable, because it really helps you design your time so that you're making the most of those hours that you're working with your student through the content. And then finally, I want to leave you with that, that last little piece of information that lets you know that you're never alone. These teaching notes are there for you to help support you as you're walk, walking through the content with your students. But more importantly, beyond these teaching notes, you have a wonderful educator in your corner as well from the Anchorage School District. These teachers, I worked with them all day today and in some professional de development training sessions with them. They are so excited to be working with your students. They're really excited to be able to um, provide different and new, unique learning opportunities for each of the students that are participating in the virtual program. And to have that educator in your corner 
Center is going to really, truly set you up for success in this virtual environment. So now we're going to take some time for some questions. Misty and Carol, do we have any questions that we should um, address in this open forum this evening? Um, Jennifer, can you talk a little bit about electives and specifically how PE works? Sure can. I do not think I have any electives built into this demo account here. Let me see. I do. All right, so here is grade two PE. Um, so for the electives, for students in grades K and 1, they will have access to PE and health. And for students in grades 2 through 5, they have access to art and PE. Um, students in grades K and 1 are going to be doing art in every subject area, especially in those projects. So we're going to focus in on health and PE for those students and then art and PE for um, the rest of the grade levels. You'll see right here that um, this is what a physical education course looks like. Um, each of the courses will um, follow that same general format. We are going to encourage students to keep an activity log. So that's a key component to these PE lessons um, and to the PE course itself. Um, we encourage students to make sure that they are um, getting some type of movement in every single day, at least four days a week, 30 minutes a day. And so they're going to keep track of all of that in their activity log. So here's an example of that activity log here. Um, and so in terms of how often students will do these electives, typically they only show up in that suggested daily schedule about two days a week. So two days of PE, two or three days of PE, and two or three days of art or health. And, um, and so they are going to take the lessons themselves will probably take about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then for that physical activity time, again, here's, here's, here's just that quick little um, rundown. Um, we're looking for students to try to get at, to try to exercise about 120 minutes a week, which um, calculates out to about 30 minutes a day, four days a week. Um, if you have students that are playing sports, you can use this time. Um, you can use that sports time as part of their exercise for the week. And um, we are going to ask them to keep that activity log. And that is something that they would be submitting for review by their teacher. Um, but the electives, they're built right into the courses and they do follow that same general format of units with um, lessons that are broken down into lesson parts. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Lots of questions about IEPs. Uh, Jennifer, if you could just kind of address how an IEP would work with this curriculum, and then Carol may want to jump in with more information as well. Absolutely. So, um, so for students that have IEPs, um, we want to make sure that we fully support any of those accommodations that are outlined in your, your student specific um, education plans. And so what you'll find in the content is that there are actually some resources already embedded and built in that you as the parent can take advantage of in terms of um, providing students with extra support, um, providing students with alternative ways to submit assignments. Um, also, you know, thinking about many times an IEP might um, require or suggest that students have modified work time and maybe frequent breaks, things like that. Some of those types of accommodations that you'll find in your student's IEP um, would be th things that you could easily implement um, from home based just simply on the fact that you're working with your student remotely. Um, some other things some other components though to a student's IEP, you might find you will need support from your teacher to um, make some of those accommodations. Maybe um, your student has modified assessments or things like that as an out as um, something that's out in terms of something that's outlined for their um, individual accommodations and modifications. Um, the ASD teachers are prepared to provide you with that support. And um, we actually talked a little bit today about ways that teachers can individualize the content for students and provide them with alternative assessments as well as um, alternative gradable activities to help support their individual learning needs. Carol, do you have anything to add about that? I, yeah, I also uh, would like families to know that um, 
your special ed uh, teacher that you have for your student at your home school, at your neighborhood or choice school, will be working with the virtual teacher to help implement instruction and provide supports also. So they'll help with best ways that your student learns. And you get to do that also when you have those meetings and contact times with the teacher. Um, I think Jennifer did a good job of just talking about how Calvert Learning has a lot of those modifications and accommodations in place. And then yourself and the virtual teacher will work together to um, determine what would be the best way to go through the content. I mean, it may be adjusting um, what the requirements are. Um, it may be adjusting the actual grade level, but those are all options and you will get to do that in a team approach. Thanks, Carol. There are several questions just around when parents will get their logins. Um, Carol, do we have a timeline for that? I've just been saying that it's going to be a little bit closer to the start of school. It, it will be a little closer to the start of the school. We actually uh, had a glitch today that I know our programmers are working on. Uh, to try and get that figured out. I actually just got an update today and it sounds like maybe it's worked out. And so then we have to push that to Calvert Learning and then Calvert Learning will create accounts and then it'll get pushed out to families and students. Our goal is a first day of school. Great, thank you so much. Um, there are several questions, Jennifer, about families with multiple um, with multiple children working on Calvert, can you talk a little bit about how that could best be managed or how maybe um, just finding a schedule that would work for um, maybe two children or three children that are within a family? Absolutely. I would say that that is um, a very common situation, actually, um, uh, at where families are working with multiple students from home within the platform. And a few general suggestions that I like to point out is definitely staggering your start times. Um, you are not tied to a um, to a, an actual schedule, a physical schedule like you do um, when you have to drop your students off at school. And so you can stagger start times for students. Typically in your family, you're gonna have at least one early riser. And so getting that student up and running and started while your other students are kind of dragging themselves out of bed or maybe doing their morning chores is a really great way to help make sure that that student, that first student that you start with, um, has some one-on-one -on -one direct instructional time with you as the parent, but also it gives you a chance to kind of give them that checklist for the day. Let them know exactly what they need to do. Um, if you have multiple students and one of those students is kind of on the younger side of things, um, definitely you're gonna need to, to have some time carved out to really work with them, especially in English language arts, but you might encourage your, if you have an older student, maybe a fourth or fifth grader, or maybe even in middle or high school, um, to kind of step in and help that student with some of those, I would say, less rigor, not rigorous is not the right word, subject areas that require a little less um, parental support like science or social studies. You can kind of use some peer tutoring there and maybe even encourage those older students to um, earn some rewards for working with the younger student, maybe a little extra screen time, a later bedtime on the weekend, things like that, little incentives to help keep them motivated. And then I'd also say, um, I think it works really well to do sort of like a rotation. So um, so your students will have, um, using that staggered start time as a way to, to help build some individualized time for your students. But also, you know, maybe while you're working with your oldest student, your younger student isn't even working in the content um, directly. Maybe they're um, working on some chores around the house, maybe making the beds or unloading the dishwasher, and then you switch. And so then it's time for you to work with your younger student while your older student is doing some chores around the house. I love to point that out because for me, as a mom, um, making that as a structured part of my day is like 
Yes, because I know that I'm going to get some things done around the house. Um, but I'm, I also know that I'm really setting all of us up for success by putting us on a schedule and making sure that I don't have idle hands, <laughs> that I don't have students that are sitting around doing nothing while I'm working with their other, with, with their brother or sister. I'm actually making sure that they are staying focused on something, um, while they're waiting for me to do some direct instruction with them. We actually also have a webinar that we'll do a little bit later in the year too that um, that really digs into some other ideas um, like those that I briefly mentioned to help support you as you're working with multiple students from home. That's great information. Thanks, Jennifer. We're having lots of questions about um, making sure that um, as parents that you all will, you know, have access to your accounts and enough time to be able to prepare. What I would like to say to that is just understand that um, you're allowed grace this year. You're allowed that flexibility. You're allowed to make sure that the schedule um, that you have for your child or your children works for your family. So if you need two or three days to get familiar with the program before you get your child in it, take that time. We want you to be comfortable with the platform. We want you to be able to guide your child through the platform. So certainly allow yourself as well as your child some grace and some flexibility. It's okay if you're not starting off with a bang and, ra and racing through the, the platform on the very first day of school. You're not going to be behind. It'll, it's perfectly fine. There's lots of time to be able to make sure that you are um, catching all of that good information and covering all of the good parts of Calvert. So um, hopefully that will make you all feel a little bit better with that. Carol, do you see other questions that would be good for the group? I do. You know, there's been some questions about if they can access the demo accounts or not. Um, and I don't know if we answered that, but that uh, has shown up a couple of times. Absolutely. Um, we have demo accounts that we will make sure that um, Carol um, can send out to you all um, as a follow up. So we will or, or she will post those somewhere where you all will know um, where to get them. But absolutely, we will give you access um, to be able to get in and to dig around. And that will also give you some valuable time to become familiar with the platform. That's a great idea. And uh, when those get sent to me, I will post them on the ASE virtual website so parents can go in and access, access them. I do want to point out some ideas if you, uh, you when you if you do choose to jump in and take a look at the demo accounts, taking some time now before your student gets started to go through thoroughly the Welcome to Calvert and the getting started lessons for each subject area. The Welcome to Calvert lesson is really the same for every subject, so you just need to go through that one once. But the getting started lesson for individual subject areas chock full of information. So you're going to really learn about um, how we suggest that for each subject area, for example, we, we think that your students should have like a notebook or a section in a binder so that they have a place to record their notes and ideas. Um, we'll refer to the English Language Arts Journal quite a bit um, because we're going to really have students think about and brainstorm ideas in that journal. So little things like that we're going to cover in those getting started lessons. And so they're going to give you as a parent some ideas about how um, you can help um, provide your students with some resources to make sure that their school year is successful. Carol, do you mind giving out the um, the website that you just referenced? There's lots of questions that popped up about just wanting to know what that website is specifically. It's the ASD virtual program. So if you go, if you just Google ASD website, and then it'll, you'll go to school start and, and then it'll take you to the ASD virtual program and we have an elementary tab and under that elementary tab is where we will post the videos. I'll send out a link through Blackboard also. So um, once those videos are posted, I'll send out a Blackboard communication like I did about the parent meeting. So, um, and I'll provide a link in there. 
That's great. And we are just almost to the hour. Carol, are there any final words that you have or, or any other questions that you would like to answer in the last few minutes? Uh, there is a couple of things about courses. So uh, school does start on uh, August 20th, but I would like to just uh, really kind of piggyback onto Misty about uh, just giving yourself some grace. Uh, this is a new learning platform, so you may need to get yourself oriented before you get your student in there and get oriented. Um, there's no set schedule about you have to do a lesson on this day or on the first day of school or anything. You get to set that schedule. So. Um, I, I know you're wanting to get access to the accounts and stuff, and we're working as fast as we can to get those out. Also, there's been some a lot of questions about the virtual teachers. Uh, please know that we have been scheduling virtual teachers as fast as we can, um, and some teachers still don't have access to their students, and some teachers do. So you may have had some communication with um, a virtual teacher if you have a couple students in your family and maybe not, but it is coming, and they will be reaching out in the first week uh, to touch base with you, to see how orientation is going. Um, they're going to send out communication about how to get started, so that's all coming. Uh, this uh, training has been recorded, and we will post it. We'll put it up on um, our website, and I'll include that link in the Blackboard training. I'd like to say thank you for Jennifer and Misty for being here and providing this training. I hope we were able to answer uh, several of the questions and provide just a good look into um, what Calvert Learning looks like and what it will provide for you and your students.